The Chinese Nightingale by Vachel Lindsay Read for LibriVox.org by Tony Addison A Song in Chinese Tapestries How, how, he said, friend Chang, I said, San Francisco sleeps as the dead, Ended license, lust and play, Why do you iron the night away? Your big clock speaks with a deadly sound, with a tick and a wail till dawn comes round, while the monster shadows glower and creep. What can be better for man than sleep? I will tell you a secret, Chang replied. My breast with vision is satisfied, and I see green trees and fluttering wings, and my deathless bird from Shanghai sings. Then he lit five firecrackers in a pan. Pop, pop, said the firecrackers, crack, crack, crack. He lit a joss-stick, long and black. Then the proud grey joss in the corner stirred. On his wrist appeared a grey small bird. And this was the song of the grey small bird. Where is the princess, love for ever, Who made Chang first of the kings of men? And the joss in the corner stirred again. And the carved dog curled in his arms awoke barked forth the smoke cloud that whirled and broke it piled in a maze round the ironing place and there on the snowy table wide stood a chinese lady of high degree with a scornful witching tea-rose face yet she put away all form and pride and laid her glimmering veil aside with a childlike smile for chang and for me the walls fell back night was a flower the table gleamed in a moonlit bower while chang with a countenance carved of stone ironed and ironed all alone and thus she sang to the busy man chang have you forgotten deep in the ages long long ago i was your sweetheart there on the sand storm-worn beach of the chinese land we sold our grain in the peacock town, built on the edge of the sea sands brown, built on the edge of the sea sands brown, when all the world was drinking blood from the skulls of men and bulls, and all the world had swords and clubs of stone. We drank our tea in China beneath the sacred spice trees, and heard the curled waves of the harbour moan, and this grey bird in love's first spring, with a bright bronze breast and a bronze brown wing, captured the world with his carolling. Do you remember, ages after at last the world we were born to own, you were the heir of the yellow throne, the world was the field of the Chinese man, and we were the pride of the sons of Han. We copied deep books, and we carved in jade, and wove blue silks in the mulberry shade. I remember, I remember, that spring came on for ever, that spring came on for ever, said the Chinese nightingale. My heart was filled with marble and dream, Though I saw the western street lamps gleam, Though dawn was bringing the western day, Though Chang was a laundryman ironing away, Mingled there with the streets and alleys, The railroad yard and the clock tower bright, Demon clouds crossed ancient valleys, Across wide lotus ponds of light, I marked a giant firefly's flight, and the lady rosy red flourished her fan, her shimmering fan, stretched her hand toward Chang and said, Do you remember ages after our palace of heart red stone? Do you remember the little dull faced children with their lanterns full of moonfire that came from all the empire honoring the throne? the loveliest fate and carnival our world had ever known the sages sat about us with their heads bowed in their beard with proper meditation on the sight confucius was not born we lived in those great days confucius later said were lived aright and this grey bird on that day of spring 
with a bright bronze breast and a bronze brown wing captured the world with his caroling late at night his tune was spent peasants sages children homeward went and then the bronze bird sang for you and me we walked alone our hearts were high and free i had a silvery name i had a silvery name i had a silvery name do you remember the name you cried beside the tumbling sea chang turned not to the lady slim he bent to his work ironing away but she was arch and knowing and glowing and the bird on his shoulder spoke for him darling 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 said the chinese nightingale the great grey joss on a rustic shelf rakish and shrewd with his colour awry sang impolitely as though by himself drowning with his bellowing the nightingale's cry back through a hundred hundred years hear the waves as they climb the piers hear the howl of the silver seas hear the thunder hear the guns of holy china how the waves and tunes combine in a rhythmic clashing wonder incantation old and fine dragons dragons chinese dragons red firecrackers and green firecrackers and dragons dragons chinese dragons then the lady rosy red turned to her lover chang and said dare you forget that turquoise dawn when we stood in our mist-hung velvet lawn and worked a spell this great joss taught till a god of the dragons was charmed and caught from the flag high over our palace home he flew to our feet in rainbow foam a king of beauty and tempest and thunder panting to tear our sorrows asunder a dragon of fair adventure and wonder we mounted the back of that royal slave with thoughts of desire that were noble and grave we swam down the shore to the dragon mountains we whirled to the peaks and the fiery fountains to our secret ivory house we were born we looked down the wonderful wing-filled regions where the dragons darted in glimmering legions right by my breast the nightingale sang the old rhymes rang in the sunlit mist that we this hour regain song fire for the brain when my hands and my hair and my feet you kissed when you cried for your heart's new pain what was my name in the dragon mist in the rings of rainbowed rain sorrow and love glory and love said the chinese nightingale sorrow and love glory and love said the chinese nightingale and now the joss broke in with his song dying ember bird of chang soul of chang do you remember ere you returned to the shining harbour there were pirates by ten thousand descended on the town in vessels mountain high and red and brown moonships that climbed the storms and cut the skies on their prows were painted terrible bright eyes but i was then a wizard and a scholar and a priest i stood upon the sand with lifted hand i looked upon them and sunk their vessels with my wizard eyes and the stately lacquer gate made safe again deep deep below the bay the seaweed and the spray embalmed in amber every pirate lies embalmed in amber every pirate lies then this did the noble lady say bird you dream of our home-coming day when you flew like a courier on before from the dragon peak to our palace door and we drove the steed in your singing path the ramping dragon of laughter and wrath and found our city all aglow and knighted this joss that decked it so there were golden fishes and the purple river and silver fishes and rainbow fishes there were golden junks and the laughing river and silver junks and rainbow junks there were golden lilies by the bay and river and silver lilies and tiger lilies and tinkling wind-bells in the gardens of the town by the black 
like a gate where walked in state the kind king chang and his sweetheart mate with his flag-born dragon and his crown of pearl and jade and his nightingale reigning in the mulberry shade and sailors and soldiers on the sea sands brown and priest who bowed them down to your song by the city called ham the peacock town by the city called ham the nightingale town the nightingale town then sang the bird so strangely gay fluttering fluttering ghostly and grey a vague unravelling final tune like a long unwinding silk cocoon sang as though for the soul of him who ironed away in that bower dim i have forgotten your dragons great merry and mad and friendly and bold dim is your proud last palace gate i vaguely know there were heroes of old troubles more than the heart could hold there were wolves in the woods yet lambs in the fold nests in the top of the almond tree the evergreen tree and the mulberry tree life and hurry and joy forgotten years on years i but half remember man is a torch then ashes soon may and june then dead december dead december then again june who shall end my dream's confusion life is a loom weaving illusion i remember i remember there were ghostly veils and laces in the shadowy bowery places with lovers ardent faces bending to one another speaking each his part they infinitely echo in the red cave of my heart sweetheart 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 they said to one another they spoke i think of perils past they spoke i think of peace at last one thing i remember spring came on for ever spring came on for ever said the chinese nightingale end of poem this recording is in the public domain Where is the Real Non-Resistant by Vachel Lindsay, read for LibriVox.org by Iswa, in Belgium, in July 2015. Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 to 48. Who can surrender to Christ, dividing his best with the stranger, giving to each what he asks, braving the uttermost danger all for the enemy, men? Who can surrender till death his words and his works, his house and his lands, his eyes and his heart and his breath? Who can surrender to Christ? Many have yearned toward it daily, yet they surrender to passion, widely or grimly or gaily, yet they surrender to pride, counting her precious and queenly, yet they surrender to knowledge, preening their feathers serenely. Who can surrender to Christ? Where is the man so transcendent, so heated with love of his kind, so filled with the spirit resplendent, that all of the hours of his day his song is thrilling and tender, and all of his thoughts to our white cause of peace surrender, surrender, surrender? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Here's to the Mice by Rachel Lindsay, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Written with the hope that the socialists might yet dethrone Kaiser and Tsar. Here's to the mice that scare the lions creeping into their cages. Here's to the fairy mice that bite the elephants fat and wise, hidden in the hay pile while the elephant thunder rages. Here's to the scurrying, timid mice through whom the proud cause dies. Here's to the seeming accident when all is planned and working, all the flywheels turning, not a vassal shirking. 
Here's to the hidden tunnelling thing that brings the mountain's groans. Here's to the midnight scamps that gnaw, gnawing away the thrones. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. When Brian Speaks by Vachel Lindsay Read for LibriVox.org by Melissa Hoffman When Brian speaks, the town's a hive From miles around the autos drive The sparrow chirps, the rooster crows The place is kicking and alive When Brian speaks, the bunting glows The raw procession onward flows The small dogs bark, the children laugh a wind of springtime fancy blows. When Brian speaks, the wigwam shakes, the corporation magnate quakes, the pre-convention plot is smashed, the valiant pleb full-armed awakes. When Brian speaks, the sky is ours, the wheat, the forests, and the flowers. And who is here to say us nay? Fled are the ancient tyrant powers. When Brian speaks, then I rejoice, his is the strange composite voice of many million singing souls who make world brotherhood their choice. Written in Washington, D.C., February 1915. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Jane Addams at the Hague by Vachel Lindsay Read for LibriVox.org by Dini Stain in Kelowna, B.C., Canada. Jane Addams at the Hague. Two poems written on the sinking of the Lusitania, appearing in the Chicago Herald, May 11, 1915. 1. Speak now for peace. Lady of light and our best woman and queen, stand now for peace. Though anger breaks your heart, Though naught but smoke and flame and drowning is seen. Lady of light, speak, though you speak alone, Though your voice may seem as a dove's in this howling flood, It is heard to-night by every senate and throne. Though the widening battle of millions and millions of men Threatens to-night to sweep the whole of the earth, Back of the smoke is the promise of kindness again. 2. Tolstoy is plowing yet. Tolstoy is plowing yet. When the smoke clouds break high in the sky, shines a field as wide as the world. There he toils for the kingdom of heaven's sake. Ah, he is taller than clouds of the little earth. Only the congress of planets is over him and the arching path where new sweet stars have birth. Wearing his peasant dress, his head bent low, Tolstoy, that angel of peace, is plowing yet. Forward, across the field, his horses go. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Tale of the Tiger Tree by Vachel Lindsay Recorded for LibriVox by Amaban A Fantasy Dedicated to the little poet Alice Oliver Henderson, ten years old The fantasy shows how tiger hearts are the cause of war in all ages. It shows how the mammoth forces may be either friends or enemies of the struggle for peace. It shows how the dream of peace is unconquerable and eternal. 1. Peace of the heart, my own for long, whose shining hair the may winds fan, making it tangled as they can, a mystery still, star shining yet, through ancient ages known to me, and now once more reborn with me. This is the tale of the tiger tree, a hundred times the height of a man, lord of the race since the world began. This is my city, Springfield, my home on the breast of the plain. The state house towers to heaven, by an arsenal gray is the rain. And suddenly all is mist, and I walk in a world apart, in the forest stage where I first knelt down at your feet, O peace of the heart. This is the wonder of twilight, three times as high as the dome, 
Tiger-striped trees encircle the town, golden geysers of foam. While giant white parrots sail past in their pride, the roofs now are clouds and storms that they ride. And there with the huntsmen of mound builder days, through jungle and meadow I stride. And the tiger tree leaf is falling around as it fell when the world began, like a monstrous tiger skin stretched on the ground or the cloak of a medicine man. A deep crumbled gossamer web fringed with the fangs of a snake. The wind swirls it down from leprous boughs. It shimmers on clay hill and lake. With a gleam of a great bubbles of blood are coiled like a rainbow shell. I feast on the stem of the leaf as I march. I am burning with heaven and hell. 2. The Grey King died in his hour, then we crowned you the prophetess wise. Peace of the heart we deeply adored for the witchcraft hid in your eyes. Gift from the sky over mastering all, you sent forth your magical parrots to call the plot-hatching prince of the tigers to your throne by the red clay wall. Thus came that genius insane, spitting and slinking, sneering in vain. He sprawled to your grassy throne, drunk on the leaf, the drug that was cunning and splendor and grief. He had fled from the mammoth by day. He had blasted the mammoth by night. War was his drunkenness. War was his dreaming. War was his love and his play. And he hissed at your heavenly glory while his counselors snarled in delight, asking in irony, what shall we learn from this whisperer, fragile and white? And had you not been an enchantress, they would not have loitered to mock, nor spared your white parrots who walked by their paws with bantering, venturesome talk. You made a white fire of the leaf. You sang while the tiger chiefs hissed and chanted of peace to the wonderful world, and they saw you in dazzling mist, and their steps were no longer insane. Kindness came down like the rain. They treated that like fleet young ponies they feasted, on succulent grains and grasses. Then came the black mammoth chief, long-haired and shaggy and great. Proud and sagacious, he marshaled his court. You had sent him your parrots of state. His trunk in rebellion upcurled, a curse at the tiger he hurled. Huge elephants trumpeted there by his side and mastodon chiefs of the world. But higher magic began for the turbulent vassals of man. You harnessed their fever, you conquered their ire, their hearts turned to flowers through holy desire, for their darling and star you were crowned, and their raging demons were bound. You rode on the back of the yellow-streaked king, his loose neck was wreathed with a mistletoe ring. Primordial elephants loomed by your side, and our clay-painted children danced with your path, chanting the death of the kingdoms of wrath. You fought until night with us all, the fierce brutes fawned at your call, then slipped into their lairs, song chained, and thus you sang sweetly and reigned. Immortal is the inner peace, free to beasts and men. Beginning in the darkness, the mystery will conquer, and now it comforts every heart that seeks for love again. And now the mammoth bows the knee, we hew down every tiger tree, we send each tiger bound in love and glory to his den, bound in love and wisdom and glory to his den. 3. Beware of the trumpeting swine, came the howl from the northward that night. Twice rebel tiger's warning was still, if we held not beside them it boded us ill. From the parrots translated the cry, and the apes in the trees came the whine. Beware of the trumpeting swine, beware of the faith of a mammoth. Beware of the faith of a tiger, came the roar from the southward that night. Trumpeting mammoths warned us still, if we held not beside them it boded us ill. The frail apes wailed to us all, the parrots re-echoed their call. Beware the faith of a tiger. From the heights of the forest the watchers could see, the tiger cats crunching the leaf of the tree, lashing themselves in scattering foam, killing our huntsmen, hurrying home. The chiefs of the mammoths our mastery spurned, and eastward recklessly fumed and burned. 
The peacocks squalled out the news of their drilling, and told how they trampled, maneuvered, and turned. Ten thousand man-hating tigers whirling down from the north like a flood. Ten thousand mammoths on coming from the south as avengers of blood. Our child queen was mourning, her magic was dead. The roots of the tiger tree reeking with red. 4. This is the tale of the tiger tree, a hundred times the height of a man, lord of the race since the world began. We marched to the mammoths, we pledged them our steel, and scorning you sang, we are men, we are men. We mounted their necks and they stamped a wide reel, we sang, we are fighting the hellcats again, we are mound builder men, we are elephant men, we left you there lonely. Beauty your power, wisdom your watchman, to hold the clay tower, while the black mammoths boomed. You are elephant men, 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 elephant men. The dawn winds prophesied, battles untold, while the tiger trees roared of the glories of old, of the masterful spirits and hard. The drunken cats came in their joy in the sunrise, a glittering wave. We are tigers, our tigers, they yowled, down, down, to the swine, to the grave, but we tramp, tramp, trampled them there, then charged with our sabers and spears. The swish of the saber, the swish of the saber, was a marvelous tune in our ears. We yelled, we are men, we are men, as we bled to death in the sun, then staunched our battle wounds with the cry of that battle was won, and at last... When the Black Mammoth Legion split the night with their song, Right is braver than wrong, right is stronger than wrong. The buzzards came taunting, down from the north, Tiger nations are sweeping along. Then we ate of the ravening leaf, as our savage fathers of old. No longer our wounds made us weak, no longer our pulses were cold. Though half of my troops were afoot, for the great who had borne them were slain, we dreamed we were tigers and leaped and foamed with a vision insane. And we cried, we are soldiers of doom, doom, sabers of glory and doom. We wreathed the king of the mammoths in the tiger leaves terrible bloom. We flattered the king of the mammoths, loud rattling sabers and spears. The swish of the saber, the swish of the saber was a marvelous tune in his ears. Five. This was the end of the battle. The tigers poured by in a tide over us all with their caterwaul call. We are the tigers, they cried. We are the sabers, they cried. But we laughed while our blades swept wide, while the dawn rays stabbed through the gloom. We are sons on fire, was our yell. Sons on fire. But man-child and mastodon fell. Mammoth and elephant fell. The fangs of the devil cats closed on the world plunged it to blackness and doom. The desolate red clay wall echoed the parrot's call. Immortal is the inner peace, free to beasts and men. Belonging in the darkness, the mystery will conquer, and now it comforts every heart that seeks for love again. And now the mammoth bows the knee, we hew down every tiger tree, we send each tiger bound in love and glory to his den. Bound in love, and wisdom and glory to his den. A peacock screamed of his beauty on that broken wall by the trees, chiding his little mate, spreading his fans in the breeze, and you, with eyes of a bride, knelt on the wall at my side. The deathless song in your mouth, a million new tigers swept south as we laughed at the peacock and died. This is my vision in Springfield, Three times as high as the dome. Tiger-striped trees encircle the town. Golden geysers of foam. Though giant white parrots sail past giving voice. Though I walk with peace of the heart and rejoice. End of poem. This recording is part of the public domain. The Merciful Hand by Vachel Lindsay Recorded for LibriVox by Amabam 
written to Miss Alice L. F. Fitzgerald, Edith Cavell Memorial Nurse, going to the front. Your fine white hand is heaven's gift to cure the wide world stricken sore, bleeding at the breast and head, tearing at its wounds once more. Your white hand is a prophecy, a living hope that Christ shall come and make the nations merciful, hating the bayonet and gun. Each desperate burning brain you soothe, or ghastly broken frame you bind, brings one day closer our bright goal, the love alliance of mankind. Wellesley, February 1916 End of poem. This recording is a part of the public domain. Section 8 of Chinese Nightingale by Vachel Lindsay, read for LibriVox.org, by Dini Stain of Kelowna, Canada. All readings are in the public domain. To volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Our Mother Pocahontas. Note, Pocahontas is buried at Gravesend, England. Pocahontas's body, lovely as a poplar, sweet as a red haw in November or a pawpaw in May. Did she wonder? Does she remember in the dust, in the cool tombs? Carl Sandburg. 1. Pohatan was conqueror. Pohatan was emperor. He was akin to wolf and bee, brother of the hickory tree, son of the red lightning stroke and the lightning-shivered oak. His panther grace bloomed in the maid who laughed among the winds and played in excellence of savage pride, wooing the forest, open-eyed, in the springtime, in Virginia, our mother Pocahontas. Her skin was rosy copper-red, and high she held her beauteous head. Her step was like a rustling leaf, her heart a nest, untouched of grief. She dreamed of sons like Pohatan, and through her blood the lightning ran. Love cries with the birds she sung, bird-like in the grapevine swung. The forest, arching low and wide, gloried in its Indian bride. Rolf, that dim adventurer, had not come as a courtier. John Rolf is not our ancestor. We rise from out the soul of her, held in native wonderland while the sun's rays kissed her hand in the springtime, in Virginia, our mother Pocahontas. She heard the forest talking, across the sea came walking, and traced the paths of Daniel Boone, then westward chased the painted moon. She passed with wild young feet on to Kansas wheat, on to the miner's west, the echoing canyon's guest, then the Pacific sand, walking, thrilling the midnight land on adam street and jefferson flames coming up from the ground on jackson street and washington flames coming up from the ground and why until the dawning sun are flames coming up from the ground because through drowsy springfield sped this redskin queen with feathered head with winds and stars that pay her court and leaping beasts that make her sport because grey Europe's rags august, she tramples in the dust. Because we are her fields of corn, because our fires are all reborn. From her bosom's deathless embers, flaming as she remembers the springtime. And Virginia, our mother Pocahontas. 3. We here renounce our Saxon blood. Tomorrow's hopes an April flood come roaring in. The newest race is born of her resilient grace. We here renounce our Teuton pride. Our Norse and Slavic boasts have died. Italian dreams are swept away, and Celtic feuds are lost today. She sings of lilacs, maples, wheat. Her own soil sings beneath her feet of springtime and Virginia. Our mother, Pocahontas. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Concerning Emperors 
read for LibriVox.org by Dini Stain in Kelowna, Canada. Concerning Emperors 1. God, send the regicide. Would that the lying rulers of the world were brought to block for tyrannies aboard. Would that the sword of Cromwell and the Lord, the sword of Joshua and Gideon, hewed hip and thigh the hosts of Midian. God send that ironside ear to morrow's sun. Let Gabriel and Michael with him ride. God send the regicide. 2. A Colloquial Reply to Any Newsboy If you lay for Iago at the stage door with a brick, you have missed the moral of the play. He will have a midnight supper with Othello and his wife. They will chirp together and be gay. But the things Iago stands for must go down into the dust, lying and suspicion and conspiracy and lust. And I cannot hate the Kaiser, I hope you understand. Yet I chase the things he stands for with a brick bat in my hand. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Niagara by Virgil Lindsay, read for LibriVox.org by Melissa Hoffman. One. Within the town of Buffalo are prosy men with leaden eyes. Like ants they worry to and fro, important men in Buffalo. But only twenty miles away a deathless glory is at play. Niagara, Niagara. The women buy their lace and cry, Oh, such a delicate design. And over ostrich feathers sigh by counters there in Buffalo. The children haunt the trinket shops, they buy false faces, bells and tops, forgetting great Niagara. Within the town of Buffalo are stores with garnets, sapphires, pearls, rubies, emeralds aglow, opal chains in Buffalo. Cherished symbols of success, they value not your rainbow dress, Niagara, Niagara. The shaggy meaning of her name, this buffalo, this recreant town, sharps and lawyers prune and tame, few pioneers in buffalo, except young lovers flushed and fleet and winds hallooing down the street, Niagara, Niagara. The journalists are sick of ink, boy prodigals are lost in wine, by night where white and red lights blink the eyes of death in buffalo. And only twenty miles away are starlit rocks and healing spray, Niagara, Niagara. Above the town a tiny bird, a shining speck at sleepy dawn, forgets the ant hill so absurd, this self-important buffalo. Descending twenty miles away, he bathes his wings at break of day, Niagara, Niagara. Two. What marching men of Buffalo flood the streets in rash crusade? Fools to free the world they go, primeval hearts from Buffalo. Red cataracts of France today awake three thousand miles away, an echo of Niagara, the cataract Niagara. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Mark Twain and Joan of Arc by Rachel Lindsay Read for LibriVox.org by Alexandra Helms When Yankee soldiers reach the barricade, then Joan of Arc gives each the accolade. For she is there in armor clad today, all the young poets of the wide world say. Which of our freemen did she greet the first, seeing him come against the fires accursed? Mark Twain, our chief, with neither smile nor jest, leading to war our youngest and our best. The Yankee to King Arthur's court returns, the sacred flag of Joan above him burns, for she has called his soul from out the tomb, and where she stands, there he will stand till doom. But I, I can but mourn and mourn again at bloodshed caused by angels. 
saints, and men. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Section 12 of Chinese Nightingale and Other Poems by Vachel Lindsay, read for LibriVox by Dini Stain of Kelowna, Canada. Section 12 The Bankrupt Peacemaker. I opened the ink well and smoke filled the room. The smoke formed the giant frog cat of my doom. His web feet left dreadful slime tracks on the floor. He had hammer and nails that he laid by the door. He sprawled on the table, claw hands in my hair. He looked through my heart to the mud that was there. Like a blackmailer, hating his victim, he spoke. When I see all your squirming, I laugh till I choke. Singing of peace, railing and battle, soothing a handful with saccharine prattle. All the millions of earth have voted for fight. You are voting for talk with hands lily white. He leaped to the floor, then grew seven feet high, beautiful, terrible, scorn in his eye. The devil eternal, Apollo grown old, with beard of bright silver and garments of gold. What will you do to end war for good? Will you stand by the bookcase, be nailed to the wood? I stretched out my arms. He drove the nails deep, silently, coolly. The house was asleep. I hung for three years, forbidden to die. I seemed but a shadow the servants passed by. At the end of the time, with hot irons he returned. The quitters sublime on my bosom he burned. As he seared me, he hissed. You are wearing away, the good angels tell me you leave them today. You want to come down from the nails in the door? The victor must hang there three hundred years more. If any prig saint would outvote all mankind, he must use an immortally resolute mind. Think what the saints of Benares endure. Through infinite birth pangs their courage is sure. Self-tortured, self-ruled, they build their powers high until they are gods, overmaster the sky. Then he pulled out the nails. He shouted, Come in! To heal me there stepped in a lady of sin. Her hand was in mine. We walked in the sun. She said, Now forget them, the Saxon and Hun. You are dreary and aged and silly and weak. Let us smell the sweet groves. Let the summer time speak. We walked to the river. We swam there in state. I was a serpent. She was my mate. I forgot in the marsh as I tumbled about that trial in my room where I did not hold out. Since I was a serpent, my mate seemed to me as a mermaiden seems to a fisher at sea, or a whiskey-soaked girl to a whiskey-soaked king. I woke. She had turned to a ravening thing. On the table, a buzzard with a leprous head. She tore up my rhymes and my drawings. She said, I am your own cheap bankrupt soul. Will you die for the nations, making them whole? We joy in the swamp, and here we are gay. Will you bring your fine peace to the nations today? End of poem. Section 13 of Chinese Nightingale and Other Poems by Vachel Lindsay. Read for LibriVox.org by Dini Stain of Kelowna, Canada. This, my song, is made for Kerensky, being a chant of the American soapbox and the Russian Revolution. O Market Square, O Slattern Place, is glory in your slack disgrace? Plump quack doctors sell their pills. Gentle grafters sell brass watches. Silly anarchists yell their ills. Shall we be as weird as these? In the breezes nod and wheeze? Heaven's mass is sung. Tomorrow's mass is sung. In a spirit tongue by wind and dust and birds, the high mass of liberty, while waves the banners red, sung round the soapbox, a mass for soldiers dead. 
when you leave your faction in the once loved hall like a true american tongue lash them all stand then on the corner under starry skies and get a gang of the worn and the wise the soldiers of the lord may be squeaky when they rally the soldiers of the lord are a queer little army but the soldiers of the lord before the year is through will gather the whole nation recruit all creation to smite the hosts aboard and all the heavens renew enforcing with the bayonet the thing the ages teach free speech free speech down with the prussians and all their works down with the turks down with every army that fights against the soapbox the pericles socrates diogenes soapbox the old elijah jeremiah john the baptist soapbox the rousseau mirabeau danton soapbox the karl marx henry george woodrow wilson soapbox we will make the wide earth safe for the soapbox the everlasting foe of beastliness and tyranny platform of liberty magna carta liberty andrew jackson liberty bleeding kansas liberty newborn russian liberty battleship of thought the round world over loved by the red-hearted loved by the broken-hearted fair young amazon or proud tough rover loved by the lion loved by the lion loved by the lion feared by the fox the russian revolution is the world revolution death at the bedstead of every kaiser knocks the hohenzollern army shall be felled like the ox the fatal hour is striking in all the doomsday clocks the while by freedom's alchemy beauty is born ring every sleigh bell ring every church bell blow the clear trumpet and listen for the answer the blast from the sky of the gabriel horn hail the russian picture around the little box exiles troops in files generals in uniform moujiks in their smocks and holy maiden soldiers who have cut away their locks all the people and the nations in processions mad and great are rolling through the russian soul as through a city gate as though it were a street of stars that paves the shadowy deep and mighty tolstoy leads the van along the stairway steep but now the people shout hail to kerensky he hurled the tyrants out and this my song is made for kerensky prophet of the world-wide intolerable hope there on the soapbox seasoned dauntless there amid the russian celestial kaleidoscope flags of liberty rags and battle smoke moscow and chicago come let us praise battling kerensky bravo bravo comrade kerensky the thunderstorm and rainbow comrade kerensky bravo bravo august nineteen seventeen end of poem section fourteen of chinese nightingale and other poems by vachel lindsay read for librivox dot org by dini stain of colonna canada our guardian angels and their children where a river roars in rapids and doves in maples fret where peace has decked the pastures our guardian angels met long they had sought each other in god's mysterious name had climbed the solemn chaos tides alone with hope aflame amid the demon deep had wound by many a fearful way as they beheld each other their shout made glad the day no need of purse delayed them no hand of friend or kin nor menace of the bell and book nor fear of mortal sin you did not speak my girl at this our parting hour long we held each other and watched their deeds of power they made a curious eden we saw that it was good we thought with them in unison we proudly understood their amaranth eternal their roses strange and fair their asphodels they scattered upon the living air they built a house of clouds with skilled immortal hands they entered through the silver doors their wings were wedded brands 
I labored up the valley to granite mountains free. You hurried down the river to Zidon by the sea. But at their place of meeting, they keep a home and shrine. Your angel twists a purple flax, then weaves a mantle fine. My angel, her defender, upstanding spreads the light on painted clouds of fancy and mists that touch the height. Their sturdy babes speak kindly and fly and run with joy, shepherding the helpless lambs, a Grecian girl and boy. These children visit heaven each year and make of worth all we planned and wrought in youth and all our tears on earth. From books our God has written, they sing of high desire, they turn the leaves in gentleness, their wings are folded fire. End of poem. Section 15 of Chinese Nightingale and Other Poems by Vachel Lindsay. Read for LibriVox.org by Dini Stain of Kelowna, Canada. Epitaphs for Two Players. 1. Edwin Booth. An old actor at the Players Club told me that Edwin Booth first impersonated Hamlet when a barnstormer in California. There were few theaters, but the hotels were provided with crude assembly rooms for strolling players. The youth played in a blear hotel. The rafters gleamed with glories strange, and winds of morning Elsinore howling at chance and fate and change. Voices of old Europe's dead disturbed the new-built castle shed, the street, the high and solemn range. The while the coyote barked afar, all shadowy was the battlement. The ranch boys huddled and grew pale. Youths who had come on riot bent, forgot were pranks well planned to sting. Behold, there rose a ghostly king, and veils of smoking hell were rent. When Edwin Booth played Hamlet, then the camp drab's tears could not but flow. Then romance lived and breathed and burned. She felt the frail queen mother's woe, thrilled for Ophelia, fond and blind, and Hamlet, cruel, yet so kind, and moaned his proud word hurt her so. A haunted place, though new and harsh, the Indian and the Chinaman and Mexican were fain to learn what had subdued the Saxon clan. Why did they mumble, brood, and stare when the court players curtsied fair and the Gonzago scene began? And ah, the duel scene at last, they cheered their prince with stamping feet, a death fight in a palace, yea, with velvet hanging incomplete, a pasteboard throne, a pasteboard crown, and yet a monarch tumbled down, a brave lad fought in splendor meet. Was it a palace or a barn? Immortal as the gods he flamed. There in his last hour of rage, his foil avenged, a mother shamed in duty stern, in purpose deep, he drove that king to his black sleep and died, all godlike and untamed. I was not born on that fair day. I heard the tale from heads grown white, and then I walk that earlier street, the mining camp at candlelight, I meet him wrapped in musings fine, upon some whispering silvery line, he yet resolves to speak aright. 2. John Bunny, motion picture comedian, in which he is remembered in similitude by references to Yorick, the king's jester, who died when Hamlet and Ophelia were children. Yorick is dead. Boy Hamlet walks forlorn beneath the battlements of Elsinore. Where are those oddities and capers now that used to set the table on a roar? And do his bauble bells beyond the clouds ring out and shake with mirth the planets bright? No doubt he brings the blessed dead good cheer, but silence broods on Elsinore tonight. That little elf Ophelia, eight years old, Upon her battered doll's staunch bosom weeps, O oh, best of men that wove glad fairy tales, With tear-burned face at last the darling sleeps. Hamlet himself could not give cheer or help, 
though firm and brave with his boy face controlled for every game they started out to play yorick invented in the days of old the times are out of joint o oh cursed spite the noble jester yorick comes no more and hamlet hides his tears in boyish pride by some lone turret stair of elsinore end of section fifteen may marsh motion picture actress by vachel lindsay read for librivox dot org by crystal rogers may marsh motion picture actress in man's genesis the wild girl of the sierras the war frat a girl of the paris streets etc one the arts are old old as the stones from which man carved the sphinx austere deep are the days the old arts bring ten thousand years of yesteryear two she is madonna in an art as wild and young as her sweet eyes a frail dew-flower from this hot lamp that is today's divine surprise despite raw lights and gloating mobs she is not seared a picture still rare silk the fine director's hand may weave for magic if he will when ancient films have crumbled like papyrus rolls of Egypt's day, let the dust speak. Her pride was high, all but the artist hid away, kin to the myriad artist clan since time began whose work is dear. The deep new ages come with her, tomorrow's years of yesteryear. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Two Old Crows by Vachel Lindsay, sung for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium, in July 2015. Two old crows sat on a fence rail, two old crows sat on a fence rail, thinking of effect and cause, of weeds and flowers and nature's laws. One of them muttered, one of them stuttered, one of them stuttered, one of them muttered, each of them thought far more than he uttered. One crow asked the other crow a riddle, one crow asked the other crow a riddle, the muttering crow asked the stuttering crow. Why does a bee have a sword to his fiddle? Why does a bee have a sword to his fiddle? Because, said the other crow, because, bee 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 because. Just then a bee flew close to their rail, and those two black crows turned pale, and away those crows did sail. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Drunkard's Funeral by Vachel Lindsay. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Yes, said the sister with a little pinched face. The busy little sister with the funny little tract. This is the climax, the grand fifth act. There rides the proud at the finish of his race. There goes the hearse, the mourners cry. The respectable hearse goes slowly by. The wife of the dead has money in her purse. The children are in health, so it might have been worse. That fellow in the coffin led a life most foul, a fierce defender of the red bar tender. At the church he would rail, at the preacher he would howl. He planted every devil tree to see it grow. He wasted half his income on the lewd and the low. He would trade in gender for the red bar tender. He would homage render to the red bar tender, and in ultimate surrender to the red bar tender. He died of the trimmings as crazy as a loon. 
and his friends were glad when the end came soon there goes the hearse the mourners cry the respectable hearse goes slowly by and now good friends since you see how it ends let each nation mender flay the red bartender abhor the transgression of the red bartender ruin the profession of the red bartender force him into business where his work does good let him learn how to plough let him learn to chop wood let him learn how to plough let him learn to chop wood the moral the conclusion the verdict now you know the saloon must go the saloon must go the saloon the saloon the saloon must go you are right little sister i said to myself you are right good sister i said though you wear a mussy bonnet on your little gray head you are right little sister i said end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Raft by Vachel Lindsay Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson The whole world on a raft A king is here The record of his grandeur but a smear Is it his deacon beard Or old bald pate That makes the band upon his whims to wait Loot and mud honey have his soul defiled Quack, pig, and priest he drives camp meetings wild until they shower their pennies like spring rain that he may preach upon the spanish main what landlord lawyer voodoo man has yet a better native right to make men sweat the whole world on a raft a duke is here at sight of whose lank jaw the muses leer journeyman printer lamb with ferret eyes in life's skullduggery he takes the prize, yet stands at twilight wrapped in hamlet dreams, into his eyes the Mississippi gleams. The sandbar sings in moonlit veils of foam, a candle shines from one lone cabin home, the waves reflect it like a drunken star, a banjo and a hymn are heard afar. No solace on the lazy shore excels the duke's blue castle, with its steamer bells the floor is running water and the roof the stars brocade with cloudy warp and woof and on past sorghum fields the current swings to christian jim the mississippi sings this prankish wave-swept bark has won its place a ship of jesting for the human race but do you laugh when jim bows down forlorn his babe his deaf elizabeth to mourn and do you laugh when Jim, from Huck apart, gropes through the rain and night with breaking heart? But now that map is here and we can smile. Jim's child and guardian this long-drawn while, with knife and heavy gun, a hunter keen. He stops for squirrel meat on islands green. The eternal gamin, sleeping half the day, then stripped and sleek, a river fish at play. And then, well dressed ashore, he sees life spilt. The river bank is one bright, crazy quilt of patchwork dream, of wrath more red than lust, where long haired feudist hot spurs bite the dust. This huckleberry fin is but the race, America still lovely in disgrace. New childhood of the world that blunders on and wonders at the darkness and the dawn the poor damned human race still unimpressed with its damnation all its game in breast chortling at dukes and kings with nigger jim then plotting for their fall with jestings grim behold a republic where a river speaks to men and cries to those that love its ways answering again when in the heart's extravagance the rascals bend to say o oh, singing mississippi shine sing for us to-day but who is this in sweeping oxford gown who steers the raft or ambles up and down or throws his gown aside 
and there in white stands gleaming like a pillar of the night the lion of high courts the hoary mane fierce jester that this boyish court will gain mark twain the bad world's idol old mark twain he takes his turn as watchman with the rest with secret transports to the stars addressed with night-long broodings upon cosmic law with day-long laughter at this world so raw all praise to emerson and whitman yet the best they have to say their sons forget but who can dodge this genius of the stream the mississippi valley's laughing dream he is the artery that finds the sea in this the land of slaves and boys still free he is the river and they one and all sail on his breast and to each other call come let us disgrace ourselves knock the stuffed gods from their shells and cinders at the schoolhouse fling come let us disgrace ourselves and live on a raft with gray mark twain and huck and jim and the duke and the king end of poem this recording is in the public domain Section 20 of Chinese Nightingale and Other Poems by Vachel Lindsay. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Dini Stain in Kelowna, Canada. The Ghost of the Buffaloes Last night at black midnight I woke with a cry. The windows were shaking, there was thunder on high. The floor was a tremble, the door was a jar. White fires, crimson fires, shone from afar. I rushed to the dooryard. The city was gone. My home was a hut without orchard or lawn. It was mud smear and logs near a whispering stream. Nothing else built by man could I see in my dream. Then ghost kings came headlong, row upon row, gods of the Indians, torches aglow. They mounted the bear and the elk and the deer, and eagles gigantic, aged and seer. They rode long-horn cattle. They cried, Alala. They lifted the knife, the bow, and the spear. They lifted ghost torches from dead fires below. The midnight made grand with the cry, Alala. The midnight made grand with a red god charge, a red god show, a red god show. A la la, a la la, a la la, a la la. With bodies like bronze and terrible eyes came the rank and the file with catamount cries, gibbering, yipping, with hollow skull clacks, riding white broncos with skeleton backs, scalp hunters beaded and spangled and bad, naked and lustful and foaming and mad, flashing primeval demoniac scorn, bloodthirst and pomp amid darkness reborn power and glory that sleeps in the grass while the winds and the snows and the great rains passed they crossed the gray river thousands abreast they rode in infinite lines to the west tide upon tide of strange fury and foam spirits and wraiths the blue was their home the sky was their goal where the star flags are furled and on past those far golden splendors they whirled they burned to dim meteors lost in the deep, and I turned in dazed wonder, thinking of sleep. And the wind crept by, alone, unkept, unsatisfied. The wind cried and cried, muttered of massacres long past, buffaloes in shambles vast. An owl said, Hark, what is a wing? I heard a cricket caroling. I heard a cricket caroling. I heard a cricket caroling. Then, snuffing the lighting that crashed from on high, rose royal old buffaloes row upon row. The lords of the prairie came galloping by, and I cried in my heart, Alala, alala, a red god show, a red god show, alala, 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 alala. 
Buffaloes, buffaloes, thousands abreast, a scourge and amazement they swept to the west, with black bobbing noses, with red rolling tongues, coughing forth steam from their leather-wrapped lungs. Cows with their calves, bulls big in vain, goring the laggards, shaking the mane, stamping flint feet, flashing moon eyes, pompous and owlish, shaggy and wise. Like sea cliffs and caves resounded their ranks, with shoulders like waves and undulant flanks, tide upon tide of strange fury and foam, spirits and wraiths, the blue was their home, the sky was their goal, where the star flags are furled, and on past those far golden splendors they whirled. They burned to dim meteors, lost in the deep, and I turned in dazed wonder, thinking of sleep. I heard a cricket's cymbals play, a scarecrow lightly flapping his rags, and a pan that hung by his shoulder rang, rattled and thumped in a listless way. And now the wind in the chimney sang, the wind in the chimney, the wind in the chimney, the wind in the chimney seemed to say, dream, boy, dream, if you anywise can, to dream is the work of beast or man. Life is the west going dream storm's breath. Life is a dream, the sigh of the skies, the breath of the stars that nod on their pillows, with their golden hair mussed over their eyes. The locust played on his musical wing, sang to his mate of love's delight. I heard the whippoorwill's soft fret, I heard a cricket caroling, I heard a cricket caroling, I heard a cricket say, Good night, good night, good night, good night, good night. End of poem. Section 21 of Chinese Nightingale and Other Poems by Rachel Lindsay. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Dini Stain of Kelowna, Canada. The Bronco That Would Not Be Broken O oh, little colt, Bronco, loaned to the farm to be broken in time without fury or harm. Yet black crows flew past you shouting alarm, calling, Beware! with lugubrious singing. The butterflies there in the bush were romancing. The smell of the grass caught your soul in a trance. So why be a-fearing the spurs and the traces? O oh, Bronco, that would not be broken of dancing. You were born with the pride of the lords great and olden, who danced through the ages in corridors golden. In all the wide farm place, the person most human, you spoke out so plainly with squealing and capering, with whinnying, snorting, contorting and prancing, as you dodged your pursuers looking askance with Greek-footed figures and Parthenon paces. O oh, Bronco, that would not be broken of dancing. The grasshoppers cheered, keep whirling, they said. The insolent sparrows called from the shed. If men will not laugh, make them wish they were dead. But arch were your thoughts, all malice displacing, though the horse killers came with snake whips advancing. You bantered and cantered away your last chance, and they scourged you with hell in their speech and their faces. O oh, Bronco, that would not be broken of dancing. Nobody cares for you, rattled the crows, as you dragged the whole reaper next day down the rows. The three mules held back, yet you danced on your toes. You pulled like a racer and kept the mules chasing. You tangled the harness with bright eyes side glancing, while the drunk driver bled you, a pole for a lance, and the giant mules bit at you, keeping their places. O oh, Bronco, that would not be broken of dancing. In that late afternoon your boyish heart broke. The hot wind came down like a sledgehammer stroke. The blood-sucking flies to a rare feast awoke. And they searched out your wounds, your death warrant tracing. And the merciful men, their religion enhancing, stopped the red reaper to give you a chance. Then you died on the prairie 
and scorned all disgraces. O oh, Bronco, that would not be broken of dancing. Souvenir of Great Bend, Kansas. End of poem. The Prairie Battlements by Vachel Lindsay Read for LibriVox.org by Diana Schmidt To Edgar Lee Masters With Great Respect Here upon the prairie is our ancestral hall. Agate is the dome, Cornelian the wall. Ghouls are in the cellar, but fays upon the stairs. And here lived old King Silver Dreams, always at his prayers. Here lived Grey Queen Silver Dreams, always singing psalms, and haughty Grandma Silver Dreams, throned with folded palms. Here played Cousin Alice, her soul was best of all, and every fairy loved her in our ancestral hall. Alice has a prairie grave, the king and queen lie low, and aged Grandma Silver Dreams, four tombstones in a row, but still in snow and sunshine stands our ancestral hall. Agate is the dome, Cornelian the wall, and legends walk about, and proverbs with proud airs. Ghouls are in the cellar, but fays upon the stairs. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Flower of Mending by Vachel Lindsay Read for LibriVox.org by Diana Schmidt to eudora after i had had certain dire adventures when dragonfly would fix his wings when snail would patch his house when moths have marred the overcoat of tender mr mouse the pretty creatures go with haste to the sunlit blue grass hills where the flower of mending yields the wax and webs to help their ills the hour the coats are waxed and webbed they fall into a dream, and when they wake the ragged robes are joined without a seam. My heart is but a dragonfly, my heart is but a mouse, my heart is but a haughty snail in a little stony house. Your hand was honeycomb to heal, your voice a web to bind, you were a mending flower to me to cure my heart and mind. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Section 24 of Chinese Nightingale and Other Poems by Vachel Lindsay, read for LibriVox.org, by Dini Stain of Kelowna, Canada. Alone in the Wind on the Prairie I know a seraph who has golden eyes and hair of gold and body like the snow. Here in the wind, I dream her unbound hair is blowing around me, that desire's sweet glow has touched her pale, keen face and willful mien. And though she steps as one in manner born to tread the forests of fair paradise, dark memory's wood she chooses to adorn. Here, with bowed head, bashful with half-desire, she glides into my yesterday's deep dream, all glowing by the misty, ferny cliff beside the far-forbidden, thundering stream. Within my dream, I shake with the old flood. I fear its going, ere the spring days go. Yet, pray the glory may have deathless years, and kiss her hair and sweet throat like the snow. End of poem. To Lady Jane by Vachel Lindsay, read for LibriVox.org by Nancy Klein, August twenty second, 2015, in Kona, Hawaii. To Lady Jane Romance was always young. You come today, just eight years old, with marvelous dark hair. Younger than Dante found you, when you turned his heart into the way that found the heavenly stair. Perhaps we must be strangers. I confess, my soul this hour is Dante's, 
and your care should be for dolls, whose painted hands caress your marvelous dark hair. Romance, with moonflower face and morning eyes, and lips whose thread of scarlet prophecies the canticles of a coming king unknown. Remember, when you join him on his throne, even me, your far-off troubadour, and wear for me some trifling rose beneath your veil, dying a royal death, happy and pale, choked by the passion, the wonder and the snare, the glory and despair that still will haunt and own your marvelous dark hair. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. How I Walked Alone in the Jungles of Heaven by Vachel Lindsay Read for LibriVox.org by Kathleen Oh, once I walked in heaven all alone upon the sacred cliffs above the sky god and the angels and the gleaming saints had journeyed out into the stars to die they had gone forth to win far citizens bought at great price bringing happiness for all by such a harvest make a holier town and put new life within old zion's wall each chose a far-off planet for his home speaking of love and mercy truth and right envied and cursed thorn crowned and scourged in time each tasted death on his appointed night then resurrection day from sphere to sphere sped on with all the powers arisen again while with them came in clouds recruited hosts of sun-born strangers and of earth-born men and on that day gray prophet saints went down and poured atoning blood upon the deep till every warrior of old hell flew free and all the torture fires were laid asleep in hell's lost company i saw return clear-eyed with plumes of white the demons bold climbed with the angels now on jacob's stair and built a better zion than the old and yet i walked alone on azure cliffs a lifetime long and loved each untrimmed vine the rotted harps the swords of rusted gold the jungles of all heaven then were mine o oh, mesas and throne mountains that i found O oh, strange and shaking thoughts that touched me there, ere I beheld the bright returning wings that came to spoil my secret, silent lair. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. An account of the poem games by Rachel Lindsay. Read for LibriVox.org by Christine G. An account of the poem games. In the summer of 1916, in the parlour of Mrs. William Watt Moody, and in the following winter in the Chicago Little Theatre, under the auspicious of Poetry, a magazine of verse, and in Mandel Hall, the University of Chicago, under the auspicious of the senior class, these poem games were presented. Miss Eleanor Dogery was the dancer throughout. The entire undertaking developed through the generous cooperation and advice of Mrs. William Vaughan Moody. The writer is exceedingly grateful to Mrs. Moody and all concerned for making place for the idea. Now comes the test of its vitality. Can it go on in the absence of its initiators? Mr. Lewell Jones, of the Chicago Evening Post, announced the affair as a rhythmic picnic. Mr. Maurice Brownie of the Chicago Little Theatre said Miss Doggery was at the beginning of the old Greek tragic dance. Somewhere between lies the accomplishment. In the Congo volume, as is indicated in the margins, the meaning of a few of the verses is aided by chanting. In the poem games, the English word is still first in importance. The dancer comes second, the chanter third. The marginal directions of King Solomon indicate the spirit in which all the pantomime was developed. Miss Dogerty designed her own costumes and worked out her own stage business for King Solomon, the potatoes dance, the king of yellow butterflies, and Aladdin and the djinn. The Congo, page 140. In the last, I am your slave, said the djinn, was repeated four times at the end of each stanza. The poem game idea was first endorsed in the Wellesley kindergarten by the children. They improvised pantomime and a dance for the potatoes dance, 
while the writer chanted it, and while Professor Hamilton C. MacDougall, of the Wellesley Musical Department, followed on the piano the outline of the jingle. Later, Professor MacDougall very kindly wrote down his piano rendition. A study of this transcript helps to confirm the idea that when the cadences of a bit of a verse are a little exaggerated, they are tunes, yet of a truth they are tunes which can be but vaguely recorded by notation or expressed by an instrument. The author of this book is now against instrumental music in this type of work. It blurs the English. Professor MacDougall has in various conversations helped the author toward a poem game theory. He agrees that neither the dancing nor the chanting nor any other thing should be allowed to run away with the original intention of the words. The chanting should not be carried to the point where it seeks to rival conventional musical composition. The dancer should be subordinated to the natural rhythms of English speech, and not attempt to incorporate bodily all the precedents of professional dancing. Speaking generally, poetic ideas can be conveyed word by word, faster than musical feeling. The repetitions in the poem games are to keep the singing, the dancing, and the ideas at one pace. The repetitions may be varied according to the necessities of the individual dancer. Dancing is slower than poetry, and faster than music in developing the same thoughts. In folk dances and vaudeville, the verse, music, and dancing are on so simple basis the time elements can easily be combined. Likewise the rhythms and the other elements. Miss Dougherty is particularly illustrative in her pantomime, but there were many verses she looked over and rejected because they could not be rendered without blurring the original intent. Possibly every poem in the world has its dancers somewhere waiting, who can dance but that one poem. Certainly those poems would be most successful in games, where the tone colour is so close to the meaning that any exaggeration of that colour by dancing and chanting only makes the story clearer. The writer would like to see someone try Dryden's Alexander's Feast or Swinburne's Atalanta in Calydon. Certainly, in those poems, the decorative rhythm and the meaning are absolutely one. With no dancing evolutions, the author of this book has chanted John Brown and King Solomon for the last two years for many audiences. It took but a minute to teach the people the responses. As a rule, they had no advance notice they were going to sing. The versifier sang the parts of the king and queen in turn, and found each audience perfectly willing to be the oxen, the sweethearts, the swans, the sons, the shepherds, etc. A year ago the writer had the honour of chanting for the Florence Fleming Noyes School of Dancers. In one short evening they made the first section of the Congo into an incantation, the King Solomon into an extraordinary graceful series of tableaux, and the potatoes dance into a veritable whirlwind. Later came the more elaborately prepared Chicago experiment. In The King of Yellow Butterflies and the Potatoes Dance, Miss Dougherty occupied the entire eye of the audience and interpreted, while the versifier chanted the poems as a semi-invisible orchestra by the side of the curtain. For Aladdin and for King Solomon, Miss Dougherty and the writer divided the stage between them, but the author was like more than the orchestra. The main intention was carried out, which was to combine the work of the dancer with the words of the production and the responses of the audience. The present rhymer has no ambitions as a stage manager. The poem game idea, in its rhythmic picnic stage, is recommended to amateurs, its further development to be on their own initiative. Informal parties might divide into groups of dancers and group of chanters. The whole might be worked out in the spirit in which children play King William was King James's son. London Bridge, or As We Go Round the Mulberry Bush. And the author of this book would certainly welcome the tragic dance if Miss Dougherty will gather a company about her and go forward, using any acceptable poems, new or old. Swinburne's Atalanta in Caledon is perhaps the most literal and rhythmic example of the idea we have in English, though it may not be available when tried out. The main revolution necessary for dancing improvises who would go a longer way with the poem game idea, is to shake off the Isadora Duncan and the Russian presidents for a while, and abolish the orchestra and piano, replacing all these with the natural meaning and cadences of English speech. The work would come closer to acting than dancing is now conceived. End of recording. This recording is in the public domain.
The King of Yellow Butterflies by Rachel Lindsay, sung for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in July 2015. The King of Yellow Butterflies, the King of Yellow Butterflies, the King of Yellow Butterflies, now orders forth his men. He says, the time is almost here, when violets bloom again. Down the road the fickle rout goes flashing proud and bold. Down the road the fickle rout goes flashing proud and bold. Down the road the fickle rout goes flashing proud and bold. They shiver by the shallow pools. They shiver shiver by the shallow pools they shiver by the shallow pools and whimper of the cold they drink and drink a frail pretense they love to pause and preen each pool is but a looking glass where their sweet wings are seen each pool is but a looking glass where the sweet wings are seen each pool is but a looking glass where the sweet wings are seen gentlemen adventurers gypsies every wit they live on what they steal their wings by briars are frayed a bit their loves are light they have no house and if it rains today they'll climb into your cattle shed they'll climb into your cattle shed they'll climb into your cattle shed and hide them in the hay 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 end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Potatoes Dance by Rachel Lindsay, sung for LibriVox.org by Iswa, in Belgium, in July 2015. Down cellar, said the cricket. Down cellar, said the cricket. Down cellar, said the cricket. I saw a ball last night in honor of a lady, in honor of a lady, in honor of a lady whose wings were pearly white. The breath of bitter weather, the breath of bitter weather, the breath of bitter weather had smashed the cellar pane. We entertained a drift of leaves, we entertained a drift of leaves, we entertained a drift of leaves, and then of snow and rain. But we were dressed for winter, but we were dressed for winter, but we were dressed for winter and loved to hear it blow in honor of the lady in honor of the lady in honor of the lady who makes potatoes grow our guest the irish lady the tiny irish lady the airy irish lady who makes potatoes grow 
Potatoes were the waiters. Potatoes were the waiters. Potatoes were the waiters. Potatoes were the bands. Potatoes were the dancers kicking up the sand. Kicking up the sand. Kicking up the sand. Potatoes were the dancers kicking up the sand. Their legs were old burnt matches. Their legs were old burnt matches. Their legs were old burnt matches. Their arms were just the same. They jigged and whirled and scrambled. Jigged and whirled and scrambled. Jigged and whirled and scrambled in honor of the dame, the noble Irish lady who makes potatoes dance, the witty Irish lady, the saucy Irish lady, the laughing Irish lady who makes potatoes prance. There was just one sweet potato, he was golden brown and slim. The lady loved his dancing, the lady loved his dancing. The lady loved his dancing, she danced all night with him. She danced all night with him. Alas! He wasn't Irish, so when she flew away, they threw him in the coal bin. And there he is today, where they cannot hear his sighs, and he's weeping for the lady, the glorious Irish lady, the beauteous Irish lady. Who gives potatoes eyes? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. How Samson Bore Away the Gates of Gaza by Vachel Lindsay. Read for LibriVox.org by Christine G. A Negro Sermon. Once in a night as black as ink, she drove him out when he would not drink. Round the house there were men in wait, asleep in rows by the Gaza gate. But the Holy Spirit was in this man, like a gentle wind he crept and ran. It is midnight, said the big town clock. He lifted the gates up, post and lock. The hole in the wall was high and wide, when he bore away old Gaza's pride into the deep of the night. The bald Jack Johnson Israelite, Samson, the judge, the Nazarite. The air was black like the smoke of a dragon. Samson's heart was as big as a wagon. He sang like a shining golden fountain. He sweated up to the top of the mountain. He threw down the gate with a noise like judgment. And the quails all ran with a big arousement. But he wept, I must not love tough queens, and spend on them my hard-earned means. I told that girl I would drink no more, therefore she drove me from her door. Oh, sorrow, sorrow, I cannot hide. Oh, Lord, look down from your chariot side. You made me judge, and I am not wise. I am weak as a sheep for all my size. Let Samson be coming into your mind. The moon shone out, the stars were gay, he saw the foxes run and play. He rent his garments, he rolled around, in deep repentance on the ground. Then he felt a honey in his soul, grace abounding made him whole. Then he saw the Lord in a chariot blue, the gorgeous stallions whinnied and flew. The iron wheels hummed in an old human tune, and crunched in thunder over the moon. And Samson shouted to the sky, My lord, my lord is riding high. Like a steed he pawed at the gates with his hoof. He rattled the gates like rocks on the roof, And danced in the night, on the mountain top, Danced in the deep of the night. 
the judge, the holy Nazarite, whom ropes and chains could never bind. Let Samson be coming into your mind. Whirlwind his arms like a top he sped, his long black hair flew round his head, like an outstretched net of silky cord, like a wheel of the chariot of the Lord. Let Samson be coming into your mind. Samson saw the sun anew, he left the gates in the grass and dew, he went to a county seat a night, found a harlot proud and high, Philistine that no man could tame, Delilah was her lady name. Oh, sorrow, sorrow, she was too wise, she cut off his hair, she put out his eyes. Let Samson be coming into your mind. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of The Chinese Nightingale and Other Poems by Vachel Lindsay.